folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here in Tucson, Arizona. And today we're gonna to take a look at the difference in following between a annealed black powder cartridge and a non-annealed black powder cartridge. Well, it's summer here in Tucson, uh, it, like it is everywhere else, but it's a lot hotter here, it seems like, than it is everywhere else. And if you've been watching the videos previously, you'd know that I can't get out to the range uh, because they've closed everything for fire hazard. And so that was back in, gal, that was early May. Now we're in July and nothing's changed. Just took a drive out yesterday to see if I could shoot at the shooting range and unfortunately uh, it's still it's still closed. So uh, gonna try to shoot somewhere else and that's the plan. So we're gonna do a little work in preparation for that, uh, particularly when I'm shooting black powder, which, you know, definitely a, a fire hazard if you've, if you've got any kind of vegetation around. And I, I hardly think I could start a fire, but I'm not taking that chance. I'm gonna follow the recommendations, really the law of that sign uh, that's posted at the range and just, just, not, just not do it. But I do think I can fire, can shoot live fire in a, in a uh, less of a risk area. I'm gonna try to, try to do that. So, what I want to do with the annealing versus non-annealing. And if you guys have watched the videos before, you know that my old annealing technique, which I didn't anneal very many things because it was a, a slow process that uh, a lot of things went wrong. It was, just, uh, it was just a pain. Basically, it was a dowel that I put in the primer pocket. And then the other end of the dowel, I put in a drill and I'd very slowly turn the drill and the dowel and the cartridge case over the flame. Uh, of the torch until it got red hot and then I try to flick it off with my thumb and knock it into into water That works just fine except that when you get a few into them You've got that little dowel that fits up in the primer pocket. It gets burned a little bit Everything gets hot it starts the casing starts falling off early uh, It just isn't the best way to do it The best way to do it in that method would have been somehow getting a steel rod that fit firmly inside of the primer pocket maybe it would have been a little bit better, but it was I could do it and I do it like 20 rounds for the 50, 90 sharps or something like that. Or I do a few rounds so I make sure the annealing, uh, the, the uh, brass was soft in the end of the 12 gauge shotgun shell of my brass 12 gauge shells. Something like that where I wasn't gonna load a lot. So I never really reloaded very many black putter cartridges like 45 and 4440 and any of those with an annealed case just because it took me so long to do it. Hundreds of them just, just wasn't something that I wanted to do. So I don't know why I didn't know it a lot earlier, but I didn't, you learn things when you learn things. And uh, somehow or another, I don't know if it was YouTube advertisement, something, uh, found out there's a such thing as an annealing machine, which I sh should have known about years ago, but I just didn't, just didn't anneal that many things. After looking into several annealing machines and prices and that sort of thing and, and features, I kind of went with this Burst Fire. And this is not a, a commercial for Burst Fire. There are other brands out there, but this one is, is kind of neat. And so, and then the price was halfway decent. So I, I picked this up and started playing around with it on how I could anneal a lot more brass a lot quicker and more efficiently than on a dowel, on a drill, one at a time, and then drop them in water. And as I got going on this thing, I have just become kind of a kneeling fool because it is so easy to do. Uh, and if you watch those other videos that I did earlier on the, particularly on the 50, 90 sharps, if you anneal a cartridge and with, with brass, with steel, when you get steel hot and drop it in water, it gets harder. With brass, when you get brass hot, drop it in water, quench it like that, it gets softer. And right now I've got a piece of brass that's not been annealed in my hands, I cannot change the shape of the neck of this case. It's just way too hard. And what, what happens then when you fire a case like this, and it happened all the time when I was shooting a lot of black powder out of a lever action gun, a lot of that fouling because the case is so hard, it won't seal against the chamber wall very well. And in, in that case then, you're gonna get blowback of, uh, of the following back into your action and down the side of the shell. Now, that's gonna affect accuracy and that's why I annealed the 50, 90 sharps because I'm shooting a lot farther distance than I was shooting cowboy action at you know, 20, 30, 40 feet at a large target. You didn't need to have that pinpoint accuracy in order to do that. You could just start reloading these things, wouldn't have to anneal them because I didn't want to put them on a dowel uh, and do hundreds of them at a time. But I did notice that 
at their, after about every string of 10 rounds going through that rifle, you had it so that carrier block would hardly raise and fall anymore. I had so much falling coming back around the cartridge case that the following didn't all go down the barrel, a lot of it came right back. And when it, come back, when it came back into the cartridge case, um, around the cartridge case and into the chamber and then into the carrier block, pretty soon that carrier block won't go up and down. Uh, and so you'd have to either pour water on it, which I hated to do because you don't know where the water's gonna go, all of it. And, uh, and then you gotta completely strip the gun later, which you wouldn't have to strip it as much maybe if you didn't do that. So what I noticed is that after even a, even a string of 10 rounds to the lever action, that carrier block would stick. And so now you've got to wipe it all down. You've got to figure out between stages how you're going to clean all that off to get that, get that carrier block going back up and down again. Uh, this is the thing that would drove most people to, to go ahead and shoot smokeless, but I like black powder. So I like to have strings of black powder. It's just, it's just more authentic and fun for me. And I don't compete, uh, not much anyway, uh, and I'm not any expert, but I do like playing around. And so if I have an annealed shell, I know that it's gonna be a lot cleaner. I wanna prove that uh, by annealing about 30 of these, loading them with black powder, and then shooting 30 rounds that are not annealed, loaded with black powder, and we're gonna see how long that carrier block's gonna last. Historically, now not, not just competition, but historically, if you were in a, any kind of a prolonged fight, uh, I'm thinking um, just any place where you were pinned down, wagon box fight, they didn't have 73s at the time or 66s either. Uh, the Army didn't anyway. And, but if you did, uh, or if you were a freight wagon driver going up the Bozeman Trail, things like that where if you got into a hot contest and you had to shoot a lot of rounds, how long is that Henry rifle, how long is that, that 66 Winchester going to last without it getting hung up? And that's a life or death situation. So if you have a cartridge case that's going to allow most of that fouling to go down the barrel, you may eventually, if you don't have enough lube, you may eventually lose some accuracy, but the gun is gonna be operable. And that's the goal of trying to anneal. Now, once I anneal a, a cartridge case, I can squeeze on the mouth of that case and it's gonna go into the shape however hard I wanna squeeze it, and sometimes I overdo it and squeeze them shut, but uh, you can squeeze it and it'll stay there. And that's the difference about a, over annealed versus non-annealed. That annealed case will be malleable, and so when, it, when, the, when the round goes off, then this case will expand to the walls. It's soft enough to be able to do that. The walls of the chamber, it's gonna hold that following and keep it down the barrel. So I wanted to show you the operation here of how this burst fire annealing machine works and show you what I'm gonna do and then I'll put them, once I get them dropped in the water, I'll put them in the, in the drying rack and then I'll be loading these up uh, tomorrow and being ready to, to get out to where I think I can shoot and see if we can see the difference on that carrier block, the fouling on that carrier block between annealed and non-annealed cartridges. So let's take a look at the machine and see how this thing goes first and then we'll, we'll go from there. Well, before we get into the annealing part of the machine, I want to show you another feature that comes with it that I really didn't necessarily shop for, but it's, it's nice to have regardless. You can buy after you've, uh, or with the machine, but I bought it a little bit later. You can buy a little packet that comes uh, with several tools for a case prep station. So I can even case prep by hand if I want to. Some handles come with it. And it puts a, when I screw it into the top of the machine right here, it puts a, uh, primer pocket cleaner in there. I've got a chafer on, for inside and outside of the case. And if I take my power button and I put it opposite the side that will run the annealing part of the machine, I can do case prep right here. And that's just kind of a kind of a neat feature. It's a, it's helpful to have it right there. There is a little pan that you can put on that has holes in it the size of the openings here, and then you screw the, the tools in after you put the pan on there that, keep, that picks up your, holds your shavings. That would have been a very smart thing to get now that I've got this and have thrown shavings around thinking that pan would have been something to get, and I'll probably go back and, and pick that up uh, as well. The other thing is you've got a, a torch here that's, that's connected to a propane bottle and you can use a soldering torch bottle. It also use the bottles that you use on those miniature grills. 
and this torch you want to have right on the end of your cartridge case kind of just just a ways down so you get that at least that top half inch or three eighths nice and cherry red is where I like to have it or just just as it's starting to change color and then it falls in so when I turn on this machine when I've got the flame going what this is going to do is it's going to pick up a cartridge case and I can have a whole bunch on this loading ramp and it's going to drop it down on the second wheel and on the second wheel there's a whole bunch of they almost look like rubber bands but they're basically something that is to make a grip on the case and it'll sit in front of that flame for however long you set it and then drop down into your into your water now some folks will say the water doesn't do anything other folks will say that the water is very important and I I have found I get better results when I drop it in the water the, the issue with that is once you've done that now I got to put it I would have to put it in the driving rack and, and have it dry so you can't just anneal it let it cool and, and restart your your loading process again but I can move the speed of this to where I can have it go speed it up a little bit slow it no, slow it down a little bit go the other way speed it up a little bit and that is the adjustments for how long this thing is sitting in the flame so that's a pretty neat feature you can get this thing however you whatever speed you want it so if you take a look at the at cartridges that are the premium cartridges they're center fire cartridges smokeless cartridges that are premium cartridges you'll notice when you open the box if you've ever bought any of those they're annealed and that's that's the basic difference between just a factory ammo and factory premium is you'll have an annealed cartridge in uh, in the annealed cartridges in those boxes and it takes a little more time but it also makes consistency of your firepower going all your powder and, and energy going out the barrel instead of around the edge of the case and so uh, you'll see that premium cartridges are annealed so it's a it's a thing for smokeless powder as well the other thing that's neat about this is I can remove this particular disc here it looks like a hockey puck almost put on a larger one and then I can do 4570 and I, I can definitely reach this flame thing has got a long arm on it. I can get that out to the end of 4570. I haven't tried 5090 sharps yet, but I think that'll work as well. So I can use this for a lot of things and kind of excited about it. Had it for quite a while. It made the move from Bozeman and I just hadn't had a chance to, to really get it going and, and take advantage of it until I got down here. So I'm going to load up this rail. We're going to start this torch and we'll see what the annealing process is all about. All right, so I've got the flame positioned where I want it. I've got it ready to go, and I've got a pan of, of water underneath. So I'm going to turn this thing on, and we'll see how the automatic annealer works. Sometimes you'll notice that the as things get hot, the arm will kind of move around on you. Can always you can always change that, but this makes annealing so much faster and easier and consistent than I ever had before. And so if, if I wanted to do 100 cases a night no big deal I just keep loading them on this thing it's got this loading ramp I've got it set to about where I want it I like the color of the case as it's coming off of the wheel and dropping down into the water I'll keep loading a few more on here Well, I'm gonna let the rest of these go and then we'll take a look at them when they come out of the water and put them in the drying rack. So I have uh, pulled out one of these out of the, out of the water. And I was just gonna show you, I don't know if you can see that. You see how I did, I, that's now misshapen because I was squeezing on it and it will squeeze into a, it took a little bit of pressure. It's a pretty thick case, 45 Colt, but I was able to squeeze it and it stayed there. Uh, and that's the key because if I was squeezing on one, then I was doing that a little bit when we started the video and it would just spring right back into a circle again. And so that just is a, it just isn't soft enough to make that, that difference when the round goes off and, and hopefully your cartridge case then expands to the wall of the chamber. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out of the water and put them in my homemade drying rack here and 
we're going to test them and see see how it, what, what happens and how well it works. I haven't done this before on, on 45 Colt. I haven't really tested back and forth. I do know in the 5090 Sharps, my accuracy goes to pieces if I haven't annealed them and, and don't get that good good expansion to the to the chamber wall but uh, 45 Colt smaller cartridge I don't know but we'll, we'll give it a try that's the that's the theory that was one of the advantages there's a lot of disadvantages too there's one of the advantages of those soft copper cases that you'd be shooting rimfire out of your uh, 44 Henry and hopefully wouldn't get all of that extra fouling back in the action lock your gun up uh, right in a right in a time where you're needing to fire a lot and fire quickly so we'll see how that goes um, yeah i'm a sweaty mess out here i'm out in my garage it's been 105 uh last monday was 114 and i don't even want to know what it is in the garage uh, it's it's like a i guess you know you can kind of think as of having a sauna i guess i could put a bucket of rocks and and a ladle out here and and have a sauna that's kind of what it feels like but uh, apologize i'm probably dripping all over the place and probably look pretty glisteny but that's what's going on uh in tucson i would put a thermometer out here but i don't want to know what the temperature is it would be uh, enough to deter you to even want to come out at all so uh, we're going to wrap this up get back inside the air-conditioned house Got to load these things up tomorrow and uh, in the next day as well, probably. And then we'll try to be able to do this just as soon as I can. Get this thing wrapped up and do the shooting portion of it. And we'll see what, what the difference is, if, if we can determine one. There's a lot of experiment that could continue. Uh, I could anneal them a lot longer, see if that made any difference. Uh, there's a lot of different things I could do here if it doesn't work. But let's just see what happens. It's the first trial with 45 Colt to really compare on that fouling, and we'll, we'll see what happens. So hang tight, we're gonna go to the range and shoot 30 of these that are not annealed, and then we're gonna shoot 30 that are annealed, and we're gonna see which ones end up with a dirtier gun. All right, see you at the range. Hey folks, I hate to do this to you. This is going to be one big long video, but as I'm editing it today, actually, it has gotten to be really long. And so we're going to break this up into part one and part two. Part one, as you can tell now that I'm closing this video, is the annealing part. Part two is going to be the shooting part. I've got the shooting part filmed as well. And so uh, that will be coming out in a few weeks. I'll get that put together and uh, it'll be relatively long also. But it's a really good test and I think you're really going to enjoy those results. I'm surprised. You'll be surprised as well. I've, I've been able to shoot it, do it, film it, and... Uh, yeah, I'm just going to hold it back, not not uh, not give it all away, but it is a very surprising test and, and really was fun fun to do. So I'm going to end this with part one. Part two will be on the range next time. And as usual, I just uh, would like you to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, give me at least give me that thumbs up if you like the video. And once again, for for this particular video, I just want to thank you for coming. Hey folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here in Tucson, Arizona, and today we're going to take a, take uh, on a black powder cartridge in the following fouling. Not oh my word, but the annealing machine that uh, that I saw was this this model right here, and this is. Um, Fire. Well, that's never happened before.